In 2020, people noticed that several interesting things were taking place at Apple. The Apple bot, a web crawler that downloads and stores content from all over the internet, was more active than it had been in the last five years. Apple was also hiring people with work histories related to search engine development, including ex-Google employees. Among them was John Gianandrea, former head of Google Search. And perhaps most noticeable was that Apple was changing the way searches worked on iPhones. Initially, the first results from web searches came from Google. But now, on iOS 14, the first results were coming from Apple. All of these factors helped to fuel speculation that Apple was working on its own search engine. Still, there were many non-believers, people who felt that there was no way that Apple would compete against Google. But this had nothing to do with the company's ability to compete. In fact, with over 1.8 billion active devices and a $2 trillion market cap, Apple is perhaps the only company that has the resources and scale to even be considered a Google rival. Instead, the source of people's doubt stemmed largely from a licensing agreement between the two companies. It's reported that Google pays Apple between eight to $12 billion each year to be its default search engine on the iPhone and iPad. And one of the terms of this agreement is that Apple is not allowed to launch a standalone search product. So why would Apple want to enter the search game if it's being paid very well to stay out of it? Well, ironically, it's this same agreement that has so many people convinced that Apple is making its way into the search game. You see, 2020 was the year that Google was hit with an antitrust lawsuit. The suit alleges that Google is participating in anti-competitive and exclusionary practices. The Justice Department would like to break up Google's monopoly. So it's entirely possible that authorities could ban this licensing agreement between Apple and Google due to its probable effect on the market competition. This means that Apple would need a new default search engine. Ultimately, Apple could be its own replacement. This isn't far-fetched because the company already has its own search engine and it's called Spotlight. Spotlight has been around since 2004. It was initially designed to allow users to quickly find various items on their computer, including images, documents, applications, music, and system preferences. But eventually, Apple would reveal that this search engine could do more than just organize files, texts, and apps. In 2014, Spotlight Search was updated with iOS 8. You could now search the web, the App Store, and iTunes. You could also find nearby locations, get movie showtimes, and news. And there have been several updates and improvements made to this search engine since then. Just last year, the company added rich search results to Spotlight. If you search for a TV show, movie, or music, then images and carousels will appear at the top of the page and offer a quick excerpt of information about the topic. Interestingly enough, this is very similar to Google's rich search results. So when can we expect the Apple search engine to launch? According to tech blogger Robert Scoble, it's just around the corner. Just before this year's Worldwide Developer Conference, Scoble published a series of tweets that further added to speculation and hinted at a timeline. Scoble says that his prediction is based on a mixture of what he's heard from insiders as well as his own deductive reasoning. It's expected that we'll see something in January of 2023. 